Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And today I'm gonna to go over my new set of uh, PB Swiss hex wrenches. Um, I'm a big fan of PB Swiss. Actually, I'm a big fan of Switzerland. Um, the Swiss seem to make a lot of great things. They make um, these wonderful knives. If you're into the kind of the old school Swiss Army knife, they make great chocolate. You can see right there, made in Switzerland. If you haven't had Swiss chocolate, it's a treat. And then um, they also are known for um, making great cheese as well. You know, the Swiss are really into, uh, into quality products. Um, and Swiss tools, they deliver as well. Um, in this case, I picked up the metric set of long ball and um, hex wrenches. Um, you can see on this, the list uh, is right here. We've got 1.5 millimeter, 2, 2.5, and then 3 through 8, no skips. Well, wait, they skipped the 7, sorry. 3 through eight, set, three through 6, 8, and 10, which is really common. That's pretty much the standard um, that you get on everything now. This had been my go-to here, uh, and I got this last century um, and used it hard. Um, I like the ball ends there. I'm going to go over something why I got the ball end here. Um, there's some big differences. Um, but to tell you how old this set is, check it out. It has a nine in it. And to my knowledge, um, there might only be one or two sightings of a nine in the wild. Um, and I'm not sure that anything made this century uses a nine. You have to go back to those 1900s in order to find something. And look at this. I started to pull this out. I thought I'd wait for this great un the great reveal. Um, move the, the brightness out of your way here. This great reveal. I don't think I've pulled this nine out in 25 years. So I'm, I'm pulling, I'm tugging it. Look at that. It's the first time it's seen daylight, probably in at least 25 years, maybe more. There it is. Maybe I should put that on eBay. Look at that. What do we got here? We got a Craftsman. can barely make out the 9mm there. Complete with plenty of rust. I should try the 7. I don't think I've pulled that one out either. Not too bad. But that 9, that's crazy. Anyway, um, a couple of things. One is you'll notice, let me get this out of the package here because uh, it's a little bright. Um, made in Switzerland. Um, those Swiss seem to know how to make quality tools. Uh, you might notice that these are colorful. These aren't. I can't wrap tape around these like I often do with certain tools so I can mark them. I could spray paint them. I probably maybe should have tried that. But anyway, you notice that the two is missing. The two was, it's probably around here somewhere, probably set down. You know, it's this little microscopic thing that blends in. Do you, you even see that, the way it's camouflaged? Um, so it's easy to lose these black tools, especially if you're using them outside. And a lot of the stuff I do is working on uh, uh, road and mountain bikes. Um, and I just, I don't know where it is. And if you're like me, you probably also have a Ziploc bag or a box or a, some sort of a container just packed with different hex wrenches um, that may or may not say what they are. And unfortunately, a lot of the fractional ones, I, I can't find a size on them. Actually, in a lot of the cheap metrics. But I've got tons of different hex wrenches. So why on earth would I need more? Well, first of all, um, we'll compare a couple of things here. I'm going to turn these. This is an easy way to, to get these out. Um, we'll go down. I'll grab the five here. Nice bright orange color. Um, right here, serialized. Somebody said they knew how to figure out the date of manufacture on those. I'd like to know. Um, and we'll compare that to the, um, to the five here. The, my, kind of my old go-to. First of all, I think these are stainless steel. If not, they're a high chrome steel. So hopefully there's less chance they'll rust. Um, bright markings. Um, Although, if you compare the actual size uh, listing, um, it's a little bit tough to see. Um, does stand out better than the black on black, but um, it is pretty small. And one thing um, that really kind of sold me on these, I wanted longer ones, but 
I also wanted shorter ones. I wanted them shorter here. And you notice, you see that? It is actually a little bit shorter um, if I line up the bend. You can see that, that the Craftsman is longer in the short side and shorter in the long side, which is what I wanted. Um, I wanted the color and this ball is completely different. And let me show you that. Do you see, see the placement of the um, indentation there? Well, these advertise a 30 degree offset and still being able to, um, to turn something. And this is a common area where, this is a seat post off a mountain bike, um, where you're trying to get in, um, but sometimes you need a lot of turning and you might not be able to turn because uh, you're whacking into the frame or into the seat post or something like that. Well, what the 30 degree does is look at that. That is just outrageous. Look how far over that is. And I measured it and I actually got more than 30 degrees that I could use it compared to, and here I'll lay this down. So I'm gonna insert this um, right here and then move it off to the side. I can actually turn the screw right there. Um, so I'm just gonna let that one drop. It's about right there. And now I'm gonna put the Craftsman in. And so when I insert that, it's about to right here. You can see that's about it. And in fact, to turn it, I have to back off just a little. So that's about where the Craftsman is. So it gives me that much more reach. This is probably maybe 20 degrees or less, 15 to 20 degrees. This is a full 30 or almost twice as much if you, once you get way out there, which is huge. Um, the fit is excellent. It, this is actually pretty good, this Craftsman. I tried a handful of different ones. A um, little more play there. Uh, some of them are pretty sloppy. Some of them are pretty good. DeWalt's I find are a little more sloppy. The Snap-ons, which I think these are made by the Eklund company, um, are pretty good, real good, good enough. Um, Titans, average, but um, a lot of times I'm using alloy bolts or I'm working on different kinds of um, kind of precision bolts. You know, and first of all, your fasteners, you know, you can have the best wrenches in the world, but your fasteners are where, you know, the rubber meets the road. So uh, if you have crummy fasteners, it really doesn't matter how good your tools are. Um, in fact, they might have to be really good just to deal with the crummy fasteners, but a lot of times they're high end and a lot of times they're alloy. So you want to be very careful with them. Um, and there's, there's all, all kinds of other materials that are used. I've got titanium parts, alloy, par alloy parts, plastic parts, all using hex connections here. And one of the things I found is um, that if you even have just a little too much play, that can turn into a strip pretty fast, especially if you've got a bolt that's kind of seized, um, you know, or not lubed right or something. Um, and that includes frame bolts on full suspension bikes. You've got to be really careful. Um, so anyway, I wanted the uh, a set of good ones. I looked at the Vera's. I looked at, I thought about the Mac, um, the RBRT bits. I'm not actually that into uh, either the Vera um, which I have, the Vera uh, kind of hex plus, I wanted it um, as smooth as possible because sometimes those, um, those uh, additional um, manufacturing uh, features to grab bolts can cause problems later, especially on the softer alloys. So I wanted it as, as clean a, a connection as possible. I wanted it longer, I wanted it colored, and I wanted that great offset. And once you start using it, it's, I mean, it's like, really, you can do that? Yeah, you can have this thing way out here and spin without any trouble. Look at that, the way that that just fits in there at an angle. You can see, you know, from the angle of the screw, how far out that is. I mean, it's like a U-joint almost. Um, because a lot of times you're using these, this end and then this end rapidly. And one of the reasons I wanted the shorter side um, is because many times you've got just a very small amount of clearance in places. You're going up under something and uh, the shorter this is, the better. And I've actually even ground these off. Um, I've, I've cut up a lot of Allen wrenches. I used to cut them up um, cut a cut a, a chunk off the end to put it in a drill before I got my first drill set. Um, but um, as far as uh, the angle and the um, the use, I mean, the, the short side here really can make a difference. Um, it could be even shorter, but then might introduce some other problems. I don't know. I should try it. Um, comes in a decent little kind of the PB Swiss feeling 
uh, plastic connector. It's got a lot of grip on it, which is important because some of these harder plastic ones, they start to lose it, you know, over the, the decades. Um, that eight, I pull out a lot. So that's why that one's loosened up. We'll see how this goes over time. Um, and they're clearly marked up here. I do like the bright colors. Um, if I lost that two, you know, you can see that that two versus um, wherever they went. Well, I lost my two here. I'll do this 1.5. You can see that it's going to be much easier to find this if it's laying on the ground um, or it's, you know, tossed in with a bunch of tools because sometimes in that pile, the little ones just disappear. But anyway, I do think it's important to uh, appreciate the, the Swiss engineering and the... Um, the time and the effort and the manufacturing that goes into the high quality tools and these um these uh pb swiss uh long rainbow colored metric hex wrenches um so far just really seem to be the ticket um, on amazon when i got them they were about 60 bucks um, or you can buy two for 225 um, maybe the swiss aren't good at math i don't know um, but anyway this is actually uh pretty nice set. I'm very pleased with it and uh, look forward to using it. With that, Doc out.